There are many ways in which we can capture the imagination of young people, but it takes resources. It took a national program in the 50s and 60s to create the space program and to create the excitement that took us into outer space. We're going to have to revive some of that because we're facing competition. Let me be blunt about this. In the new world, there are going to be other nations challenging the leadership of the United States. They're going to say, hey, the United States has been the limelight for too long. It's time for new players to share in the limelight. Now, I got nothing against competition, but it means that we cannot rest on our laurels. It means several things. First, we have to revitalize our educational system. You realize that America has one of the worst scientific educational systems known to science. We are nearly dead last in almost every single test of our high school kids in science and mathematics. However, the only reason why we don't implode is because we have a secret weapon. Our secret weapon, in spite of our dismal educational system, is called the H-1B. That's the H-1B visa, the genius visa. We are like a magnet sucking up the greatest minds of the earth. However, we can't rest on that because these scientists are now going back. They're going back to India. They're going back to China. And so we have to create our own scientific elite. We have to inspire them. We have to give them role models. We have to put resources. We have to raise the level of science education in this country. And we have to reinvigorate what we once had. I tell people who have children that when a kid turns to be about age of 10, that's when the age of discovery begins. That's when they have their first telescope, their first chemistry kit. They look at the stars, they visit a planetarium. At age 10, it all begins, the romance of science. And then when they hit about 16, it's all over. Interest in science is crushed right out of them. Peer pressure, hormones take over, and hey, we lose it. We are all born scientists. Every single one of us is born asking, where did the sun come from? Where did I come from? What does it all mean? What are all these stars all about? And then when we're, we hit junior high school and high school, it's crushed right out of us. My daughter had to take the New York State Regents exam in geology. And I said to myself, this is great. I could sit down with her, teach her about the principles, the concepts that drive all of geology, continental drift, the evolution of rock and volcanoes, the romance of the earth. But what a shock. I got the book. The book was nothing but memorize the names of the crystals, memorize the names of all these minerals. It was enough to, to put you to sleep. And then my daughter comes up to me afterwards and says, Daddy, why would anyone want to become a scientist? That was the most humiliating time in my entire life. I felt like taking that book and ripping it apart because this is the one way to guarantee that you will never excite the imagination of young people to science by crushing it out of them, by reducing science to nothing but drills and things that have no relevance to their lives. You know, in the future, we're going to have the internet in our contact lens. You'll simply blink and you'll be online. And if you want to know the names of the crystals, the names of the minerals, all you will have to do is blink. That's the future. And we're not preparing our young kids for that future.